Hi everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we have already seen how we can create a simple Mocha test, how we can group, how we can skip, and how we can target it, you know, test cases alone. And then there are other features of Mocha like hooks. Now it's time to write actual test cases using WebDriver IO. So let's get into it directly. We'll open that we have already also, uh, you know, gone through these, the folder structure completely. So let's just open the test folder and we have a specs and page objects. Now, if you open pex example e2e.ts, we already have these test cases written by default because we are generated uh, while doing the setup. And if you see here, we have a describe block, which is like your feature, and then it block, which has your test, and then actual the code that has been written. We are not going to make use of this, so let's try to create a new file. Now, for our testing purpose, I'm going to take this sample. For the testing purpose, I'm going to take this sample website, saucedemo.com. And let's try to automate the login scenario of this page. So let me create one file, new file, source demo login.ts. Now I'll try to keep the you know beginning starting of the file name as small letters because that's what we have been following here. Now, if you want to write any Mocha test cases, because we are going to use Mocha framework, you have to start with describe as we have discussed in the last video. So let's start with a describe. We'll create a structure. And then we'll say source demo app login, comma, bracket, error function. And so this is like a feature. Now let's create a test, it block. And then should log in with let's check what we have standard user valid standard user just giving some description meaningful description it says that we are going to test with standard valid user and see whether application login is working is fine or not so this is the basic structure of a mocha framework you need to have a describe where you have a feature and then you know you have it block where you will be test cases and then you can write multiple it block right so this is how it is now the first thing when we are writing any automation what we have to do we have to find an element of the web page and perform action in the element on the web page and the third should be validate whether that action is successful or not that's what we do in the automation actually when we are writing a code first is find the element perform action on the element and then validate with that whether that action is successful or not three things so let's first find the element now in this web page what uh, elements we are going to deal with because we have to perform login we need to enter username password and then we have to perform click on this login button right so let's write the locator for this now there are local uh, locator strategy if you are new, completely new to automation, you need to, you know, learn how to write element locators of the web pages. I'll go a little fast, but you can explore. I'll give you the link of the website and then you can explore and understand how to write exactly the locator. So if you go to our official web page, uh, you know, official documentation of the WebDriver IO, in the docs, you will have guides and then selectors. Under docs, guides, selectors. So let's click on this. And this will show you how you can write different selectors or the locators of the element. So for example, if you want to write a CSS query selector, you can use like this. If you want to find the element by the text, so if your HTML element is something like this, you can say equal to and the text and it will find by the text. If partial link test, you can give the partial link. And see here, if you see here, it's saying driver. That means web driver IO is the full text. We are saying driver. So this is a partial one, all right? then uh, we have elements with certain text and then there are so many other examples are given so detailed examples are already given how you can you know write the locators so just go through it try to you know understand it's pretty easy but let me just explain you a bit so for example now if you want to inspect any element to write a locator you have to inspect the web page so right click on that particular element for example i want to write the locator for this username so right click inspect and this will open HTML. So if it opens in the right side, I can click on three dot and then I'll click on this below icon. So it will come here. Now, this is the locator. So for example, this is the arrow icon. If you see here, this arrow icon, if you 
click it will be highlighted and then go to the element each and every element highlighting in the web page whichever element you need to deal with you can click there so i'm dealing with username i'll click here now my element will be highlighted here now you need to find what is the unique way to find the element for example if you have id or test data test you can always go with that so we already have element locator called id here user hyphen name so if you want to write a locator using css selector with any id attribute here so what i'll do either you can right click and then search with find you should have somewhere or you can press ctrl f in your keyboard or command f in your keyboard this search panel will open now in that panel if you want to write a locator with the id all you have to say hash and that id name that's all once you do that you'll find one of one matching that means and if i click again here it will highlight the page of that element that means it is highlighting so this is my locator and this is a css locator of an id so if you have id attribute you can use a hash and if you're still not very sure how to write how the hash or id or how to write a xpath there are different strategies you know you have a css you have a xpath in that by text by id uh, by partial link text and all other strategies are there you can just google it there are you know basic website and this strategy for writing locators is not dependent on the tool that you are using whether you are using selenium you are using webdriver io or any other the strategy remains same the locator strategy remains same everywhere so you can use it across so i'll just copy this locator now let's come back and write the locator here so if you are going to write a locator you have to say let or const then what is the name of the locator user name what is the this is a username right username text box equal to now when you are writing a locator you write in the dollar because it finded only one element when you are dealing with multiple element you have to select double dollar but with a single element single dollar then in the bracket single or double quote and then paste whatever locator you have copied as of now we are writing in this way we are writing the locator in the test case but we'll enhance this and we'll move everything all the locators to the page objects that we'll see in the later video so now for now let's write the locators here in the test itself so username text box we have completed now let's check for the password password also has id so it can be hash and password and if i find it is finding that one particular element so this is a good locator const password text box right then for the login button again let me highlight it here it does input add id yes it has id so hash and login button yeah const login button equal to so same way if you see dollar in the bracket round bracket in the single or double quote the locator you are trying to write let's write that so we have done the first part that is finding the element or writing the locator that is done now next is perform action in that element that is the next step now we need what action you have to perform now let's check manually if you are going to test this application we'll enter the username we'll enter the password and we'll perform click on this login button that's what we will do right let's try to do the same thing so if you want to enter anything or this you know set the data in in the text box the locate the strategy or how we can do that so let's go to the website and search with something called set value there is something called set value send a sequence of keystrokes to an element uh, after the input has been cleared if the element does not need that means what it does basically if any element is written here it will clear everything and it will enter the data how what the set value how we can use set value so let's take an example if this is our locator we need to write await the element name how we have written and then set value and the whatever whatever the value you want to set you can set it so let's do the same way so you have to say await then the element name element is username text box box dot set value and now we are getting auto suggestion because we have an integer license using ts config file so i'll select set value what do we want to pass set value so we want to perform a you know a standard username this is our username so let's use this as a hard-coded user now there is an error here because we are writing await so when we are writing await each it block should be represented by key called async 
and you need to make sure you are writing async and await if you don't write you have to be very careful because when you don't write await there is a problem comes which i'll explain later in the video but just understand with each it block you need to write async and each and every web driver io functions that is written you need to add await uh, because it is written in the you know asynchronous mode and how you will understand which functions if you hover mouse and the element locator if that is dealing with the promise See, I'm hovering mouse in the set value. If it is dealing with a promise, that means you have to add await. So await element locator, that is whatever the element dot set value and the value you want, you want to set. Similarly, so that is it will enter the username. Then it will we need to enter the password. What is the password? This is the password. I'm copying it from here. Now you have to say await, then password text box. The element name is password text box dot set value and then whatever the value now if you see automatically a multiple await has been added so you can remove it because we don't need multiple await and i'll remove this curly sorry the round bracket as well so it will be straightforward await you your element name set value and the value you want to set now we want to perform setting the value in these two but in this we don't want to set the value we want to perform click on this so the element locator name is login button so we'll say await element name dot click is a function available so this is the operation that we are performing entering username entering password and then performing click so we have done two things first writing the locator is done then performing action on the element or on the web page so we are performing action here and then we need to validate whether that action is right or wrong so what we need to validate whether after entering this user standard username and this password whether and clicking on the username, whether you are navigated to this page or not. How we will navigate? One is either you can validate this URL or you can validate this header or maybe this page, whether you are landing in the product title or not. So I'm going to validate this header. So once you log in, you should land on the product page. This is the product page. So let's find the locator, right click, inspect. And this is the title. Let's see. Now here we don't have attribute called ID, but we do have something called class and class is title. So if you want to write a CSS locator with a class, what you have to do dot and the class name, dot and class name title. There's only one with the title. So I'll copy this is a valid locator. Let me copy this. Now let's write that locator also. Mm. Product title locator single dollar in the bracket double quote or single quote and the locator now we need to we make sure whether after performing a click we are landing in this page or not or this particular product is displayed or not so we have to write assertion validation is nothing but assertion web driver web driver io provides a lot of assertions that we can find in the website 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 as well so if we go back here in not this expect here there are multiple assertions available like if you want to validate the url or the title of the page or element is displayed or not let's say how we can we will try to use whether we whether this element is displayed that's what we are going to validate how we can validate the element to be displayed this is how if you are writing locator like this then this is your assertion await expect the locator name to be displayed let's write the same way await then in the expect and in the bracket locator product title to be displayed displayed not disabled so now let's recap it quickly we have written a describe block which is your feature then one single test where we want to validate with a standard user we have written three locator one for username password and login button then we are performing action that is entering username entering password and then performing click on the login button then the third step is to validate that action is correct or not that means we are validating whether after clicking on the login button we are landing in this page and this product products level is displayed or not that's what we are validating now we have written the uh, this sample test let's try to run it now if we remember the command uh, we have seen in the last time for the mocha the command was we were running npx mocha test but we are not writing only the mocha test we are not running we are running webdriver io test now 
to run a web driver IHS, we need to run through this, you know, script here. We already have a script created called WDIOC. If we say, if you want to run any web driver IO complete test, you have to say npm run WDIO. What it will do? It will basically go to the package.json, look for any WDIO command. It will look yes. Then it will find this configuration that is WDIO config.ts, which is this file. It will come here and look look for the spec section where is it? yeah spec section and it will see what and all test i have to pick so it says under test folder under spec folder under test under spec all the files with the dot ts all the file with the dot ts you pick and start running that's what it will do now i don't want to run both of these test cases i want to run only this so what i do instead of telling run everything i'll tell to run only this file so let's give the file name source demo login.ts now if i say npm run wdio that means it goes to package.json it finds this uh, with this wdio command find this command which is this configuration file then it will come and find here spec and it will tell only to run source demo login.ts so let's run and see whether it is working or not so it is Okay, it's going to fail. So I've done a blender mistake. Before doing anything, before performing action or anything, you need to open or load the URL. We have not written any code to let that load the URL itself at all, right? So obviously we have to first load this page, login page. So we have not written any code for that. So first we need to load the URL. So in the beginning itself, I'll say to, if you want to load any URL await browser dot URL, and then give the URL, whichever you want to load in the double quote, All right? So it will load the URL, then it will find this element, perform this action on the element, validate whether the product is displayed. Let's rerun. Okay, it's loading. Oh, it clicked so fast. We couldn't see also, like it shows it passed, but let's make sure whether it's working perfectly fine, whether it's really working. What I'm saying, whether it should be displayed. What if I say dot not displayed? Now, what, what, what I'm saying, write everything, perform correct operation, but I expect this element not to be displayed, but in actual element will be displayed. So your test should fail this time now. Let's just try it out. So I'm saying not to be displayed, but actually element will be displayed. Element is displayed here, right? But we are trying to validate not displayed. So the test is going to fail now. And so we need to wait for the default timeout, which has been defined. Execution has been completed. Now, if you see here, test has been failed, right? The test is failure. And what is the assertion error? Expect title not to be displayed. Expect not, but received it displayed. That means we are saying it should not display, but it is displaying. So that means our test is working perfectly fine. When we are entering this username and password, it is going to the login page. So with this, we are able to run very sample test case and perform action on the element and do the assertion as well now in the next video we will see how we can perform some different other operations and then in the subsequent videos we will see how we can optimize this code rather than writing all these locators in this, this page we'll move it to the different class page class and then we'll make it more our test more readable so that's all for this video thank you so much